pleasant day to our dear teacher, Ma'am Angie, our teacher in Ed240. My assigned topic is about the government-owned and controlled corporations. So, the reporter is Ms. Jazel Faith A. Ibanez. Here are the subtopics to know. The first one is the definition. Second is the role of GOCCs. Third one is how many GOCCs. Fourth is the powers and functions. The fifth is the classification of GOCCs. And the last one is the GOCCs terms and questions. The first is the definition. What do you mean by government-owned and controlled corporation? It is a central advisory monitoring and oversight body with authority to formulate, implement, and coordinate policies to govern, government, or control corporation which shall be attached to the office of the president. What is the role of GOCC in the Philippines? GOCCs are important sources of income for the national government NG or under the Section 3 of Republic Act 7656. All GOCCs are required to declare and remit at least 50% of their annual net earnings as cash, stock, or property dividends to the national government. How many GOCCs are there in the Philippines? 82 billion worth of cash advances, equity and subsidy to 6 GOCCs, National Food Authority or NFA, National Ele Electrification Administration or NIA, Manila Water Works and Severage System, MWSS, Local Water Utilities Administration or LWUA, Philippine National Railways or PNR, and Light Rail Transit Authority or LRTA. The fourth one is the powers and functions. Evaluate the performance and determine the relevance of the GOCC. To ascertain, shall be guided by any of the following standards. The first one is the functions or purposes for which the GOCC was created are no longer relevant to the state or no longer consistent with the national development policy of the state. The second is the GOCC's functions or purposes duplicate or unnecessary overlap with functions, programs, activities, or projects already provided by government agencies. The third one is the GOCC is not producing the desired outcomes or no longer achieving the objectives and purposes for which it was originally designed and implemented and or net cost efficient and does not generate the level of social, physical, and economic returns vis a vis the resource inputs. The fourth one is the GOCC is in effect dormant or non-operational. The fifth is the GOCC is involved in an activity best carried out by the private sector and the sixth one is the function, purpose, or nature of operations of any group of GOCCs require consolidation under holding a company. Upon determination by the GCG that is to be the best interest of the state that a GOCC should be reorganized, merged, streamlined, abolished, or privatized, it shall first is implement the reorganization merger or streamlining of the GOCC unless otherwise directed by the president or recommend to the president the abolition or privatizations of the GOCC and upon the approval of the president. Implement such abolition or privatization unless the president designate under agency to implement such abolition or privatization. What are those classification of GOCC? The first is the developmental or social corporations. The second is the proprietary commercial corporations. The third is the government financial investment interest institution. The fourth is the corporation with regulatory functions. The fifth is others as may be classified by the GCG without prejudice to further subclassifications in each category and or any other classification based on parameters as it may find relevant or material such as but not limited to industry type. 
Bear in mind that in consultations with the relevant government agencies and stakeholders, adapt with 180 days from its constitution. An ownership and operations manual and the government corporate standards governing GOCs is provided that the government corporate governance standards applicable to GOCs shall be no less rigorous than those required by the Philippine Stock Exchange or the Securities and Exchange Commission of listed companies or those required by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas or the Insurance Commission for banking institutions and insurance companies, as the case may be. The manual shall be consistent with the medium-term Philippine Development Plan issued by the National Economic and Development Authority or NEDA and shall include Objectives of State Ownership Second is the role of national government in the governance of GOCs. Third is the modes of implementation of the ownership policy. Fourth is the guidelines on the monitoring of the operations of all GOCs, including re the related corporations. And this shall include strategy maps, charter statements, performance, commitment, and such other mechanisms. The fifth is the rules, relationship, and responsibilities of the states, the government agencies to which the GOCC is attached, and the GOCC. The sixth is the disclosure and transparency requirements. And the seventh is the code of ethics of directors and officers. The eighth is the creation of board committees and similar oversight bodies. The nine is the integrated corporate reporting system. The 10 is Statement of the Social Responsibilities of the GOCC, and the last is Such Other Matters as the GCG may deem proper to include. So the six uh, subtopics for this topic is the GOCC's terms and questions. What is the Charter GOCC? It refers to the GOCC including government financial institutions created and vested with functions by special law. What is a Chief Executive Officer? So it refers to the highest ranking corporate executive who could be the President or the General Manager, Chairman or the Administrator of a GOCC. What is the Fit and Proper Rule? It refers to the standards for determining whether a member of the board of directors or trustees or CEO is fit and proper to hold a position in a GOCC, which shall include but not limited to standards on integrity and experience, education, training, and competence. What is non-chartered GOCC? Refers to the GOCC organized and operating under Batas Pambansa Bilang 68 or the Corporation Code of the Philippines. What does government corporate standard mean? It means a set of principles derived by law, practices, rules, standard prescribed by the government's commission for the government-owned or controlled corporations that generate long-term and desirable value for the state. What is an ownership manual? It refers to guidelines and rules pertaining to the ownership by the state or corporations and enterprises or the exercise of such ownership governing the GOCs or any classifications thereof. What is a compensation and position classification system? The CGC, after conducting a compensation study, shall develop a compensation and position classification system, which shall be applied to all officers and employees of the GOCs, whether under the salary standardizations, law or exempt therefrom, and shall be consist of classes of positions grouped into such categories as the GCG may determine, subject to approval of the president. What will happen to the current position titles and salary grades governing GOCs? All positions in the positions classification system, as determined by the GCG as approved by the President, shall be allocated with a proper position, tides, and salary grade in accordance with the index of occupational services, position titles, and salaries grades of the compensation and position classification system, which shall be prepared by the GCG and approved by the President. What about additional incentives? 
so that GCG may recommend to the President incentive for certain position titles in considerations the good performance of the GOCC, provided that no incentive shall be granted unless the GOCC has fully paid all taxes for which it is liable and G GOCC has declared and paid all the dividends required to be paid under its charter or any laws. What are the limitations to the compensations per diems, allowances, and incentives of GOCC directors and officers? The charges of each of the GOCCs to the contrary, notwithstanding, the compensation per diems, allowances, and incentives of the members of the board of directors or trustees, the GOCCs shall be determined by the GCG using the reference, among others, for the Executive Order Number 24, dated February 10, 2011, provided that the directors or trustees shall not be entitled to the retirement benefits as such directors or trustees. What does the fiduciary duty and trustee relation of a GOCC director or officer entail? Where a member of the board or an officer by virtue of the office acquire or receives for oneself a benefit or profit of whatever kind of nature, including but not limited to the acquisitions of shares and corporations for the GOCC as an interest using the properties of the GOCC for their own benefits, receiving commissions on contracts from the GOCC assets, or taking advantage of corporate opportunities of the GOCC, all such profits or benefits shall be subject to risk institutions without prejudice to any administrative, civil, or criminal actions against such board member or officer. Does the creation of new GOCC or related corporation under the Corporation Code require prior approval? A government agency seeking to establish a GOCC or related corporation under the Corporation Code of the Philippines shall submit its proposal to the GCG for review and recommendations to the Presidents for approval. So this is in exchange for the Commission or the SEC shall not register the Articles of Incorporations and Bylaws of a proposed GOCC from the GCG stating that the President has approved the same. Does the acquisition of controlling entries and approval corporation requires prior approval? Any government agency seeking to purchase a corporation or acquire controlling entries therein shall submit its proposal to the GCG for review and approval of the President. So here are my references in this topic. So I know that you have no question at all. So have a nice day everyone and thank you for listening.